Almost every modern digital mixer has matrices. And like almost everything on modern digital mixers, they can be quite confusing if you're not used to them. What exactly are they? How are they different from auxiliary buses? And what do we even use them for? We'll cover how to route audio to matrices, what audio you might send into a matrix, and at least one less conventional trick that you can use them for. If we've not met yet, I'm Andrew, I'm a live sound engineer, and I mix shows for a living. If you're just getting started on your live sound career, then you should check out my free guide, Three Steps to Perfect EQ. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But for now, let's dive in. Okay, so what are matrices on a digital mixer? It's essentially just another routing option, right? It's another place for you to send audio and collect audio on your mixer. You can actually think of it as a mix of mixes. If something like an auxiliary output or a group or even your master is a mix of input channels, right? drums, bass, guitar, then a matrix can be a mix of your auxiliaries. And we're going to why that might be in a minute. First of all, I want you to think about the signal flow within your mixer, right? Obviously you start with your inputs. You plug in a microphone or a signal, you gain it up and it comes up on the fader, doesn't it? You have all these faders in front of you, which conventionally might be, yes, drums, bass, guitars, vocals, keys, tracks, that sort of thing and you're mixing them all, right? And as you push the fader up, that's you determining how much of that specific instrument you are mixing to a destination. It just so happens that the default destination is usually your master bus. That is usually the stereo bus which you are mixing to. But if you think about when you build a monitor mix, right? You're using an auxiliary bus to build a whole new mix which you send to a different speaker, the monitor speakers on the stage. So now you click sends on fader or you use your rotary controls and you build a new mix. Maybe you only put a little bit of vocals, a little bit of bass, a little bit of guitar in this first mix and then you send that off to one monitor. Alternatively, you might use buses as groups. You might have all of your drum channels mixing into a group, a stereo group called drums and then Instead of sending the individual channels to your master and the speakers, you send the channels to the group and then you mix the group to the master and then it moves on to the speakers, right? So the signal is flowing into your channel, into your group, into your master, then out to the speakers, isn't it? So all of these things are buses, right? The auxiliary output that you send to your monitor, that's a bus, it goes to a monitor. The stereo group that you send all your drum channels to, that's a stereo bus, it goes further on to your master. Your master, your stereo output, that's a bus, right? It's your main stereo bus. And then you are routing the output of that main stereo bus to your speakers. And so once we have mixed our inputs, drums, bass, guitars, vocals, into a bus, whether that's drum group or master bus, we can send this bus further to one final stage, and that is a matrix. So a matrix allows us to mix these different buses together in different quantities. And we'll talk about those quantities towards the end of the video. So what do we use matrix outputs for? We use them as a way to get sound out of the outputs. They are the sort of last bastion of control we have before sound leaves the mixer. We might use them to send our master mix to different speakers in different quantities. For example, we could have main PA and side fills. And then we might want to balance those two levels to create a nice harmonious mix in the room, but we still want just one master fader to control the whole thing. Or we might want to send a copy of our master mix somewhere else to a breakout room, to a broadcast mix, something like that, without having to create a whole new mix or play with the auxiliaries or anything like that. If we were to do that on auxiliaries, then we would need to send each individual input to our new stereo bus, which we would call broadcast, but instead what we can do with the matrices is we just send the main stereo bus to a stereo matrix and then we route that matrix out to a broadcast feed. Now if the broadcast asks for more or less, you can turn that up or down without actually having to adjust your main master fader because that is going to one, the broadcast mix, but two, your main PA mix feeding the room. So let's talk about when we're gonna use them. The most recent thing that comes to mind for me setting up matrices is when I have a bunch of speakers that I need to set up and I have no processor. I have no way of managing those loudspeakers and how they interact together. Let's say we have two main speakers and we have two extra speakers. So that could be delays further down the hall or outfills filling out the side of the room. And we need to balance the level 
so that the side fill speakers, the outfill speakers, are no louder than the main speakers. And we also need to apply a little bit of delay so that they are in sync with the main PA. We still want our main master mix from the mixer to feed the PA, but we want to break it down into smaller parts. So we have one stereo matrix feeding our left, right, that's our main PA. And then we have another stereo matrix, which is feeding our outfills. So that's the outfill on the left and the outfill on the right. And then we can adjust those levels individually, apply a little delay to sync it up. You might do the same thing with subs. You could put your tops and your subs on two separate matrices so that you can control the time alignment of the tops and the subs, or maybe you can easily control the level, the amount of sound that's going into the subs versus the tops. Another option, which I touched on a minute ago, is that you have a breakout room where people are sitting, they're not in the main room, but they still want to hear what's going on in the main room, but potentially at a different volume. You can use a matrix to connect up a couple of extra speakers in there and feed it separately from the main PA. So everything is nice and balanced, but you still just have one master fader. Think if you did this in auxiliaries, every time you pull your master fader down, you would need to go into your aux masters and bring that down as well. That's no good to anyone. So we talked about it being a mix of mixes. One time you might want to use that functionality of it is if you're creating a sort of quick mix down for a broadcast feed or for recording or something like that. Let's say you have all your inputs and all your inputs are routed to the groups, drums, bass, guitar, vocals, for simplicity's sake, and you're mixing that in the main system, right? But you're in a small-ish room. You probably don't have a lot of the drums or the guitars in the PA because of the volume of the instruments on the stage. But if you're in a breakout room or if you are broadcasting this out to someone watching on stream, then you still need to include all of those elements because they're not gonna be hearing them in the room, right? What we do then is you are just mixing for the room, right? You're creating the balance, which is going to the group. Your group is going to your master, and then you mix the groups for the room. And you're then able to send the groups to a separate matrix, which you send to your broadcast feed. So you create a new matrix called broadcast, right? And you're just gonna send your stereo master to it. But you pop on some headphones and you have a listen to your stereo master and you realize that there's not actually a lot of drum overheads, cymbals and things in it. So you can just go to your drum group and now you can add a little bit of your drum group into this new broadcast matrix that you created and you just add it into taste until everything is blended and it sounds nice. But you don't have to use matrices for combining mixes. Depending on the mixers that you're using, you can actually send input channels into mixes and just use them as a sort of additional auxiliary input to send to an effects unit or to send to a monitor. If you're using the Midas Pro consoles, like, Every matrix can receive an input from absolutely everything on the entire console. So yes, you can send your groups and your buses to the matrix, but you can also send individual channels. So when I'm mixing on a Pro 2, I actually like to use my matrices as effects sense. I've got my three reverbs and then a delay setup, and then I use the last two stereo matrices for the PA and for any kind of recording feed, should it pop up. So it's just somewhere that you can send audio, and depending on the limitations of your mixer, you might be able to send your auxiliaries, your groups, and your masters to it, or you might be able to send absolutely every channel to it. Read the manual on your mixer and leave a comment down below and let me know how do you use matrices in your venue? And if you've not used them yet, what are you gonna try them out on? I'll leave a video up here about setting up PA systems in case you're going to use them for doing that. Until next time, goodbye.